It's now time for the news. My name is Pakwisi Shandorf. Now, the former president of the Ghana Bar Association is asking government to safeguard the investment of citizens as a means of ensuring sustainability of the African continental free trade area. Samuel Ukujitu, who is chairing the 74th Annual New Year School at the University of Ghana on Tuesday, said that this would help revive the economy. A report by Hannah Odame and Elisha Panford. The 74th New Year School is being organized on the theme Positioning the African Markets for Sustainable Economic Development through AFTA. Speakers sought to explore options of how AFTA, which is hosted in Ghana, could benefit citizens and also increase profitable trade across the continent. Chairman of the New Year School, Sam Okujeto, was of the view trade can only be sustainable in a stabilized political environment. So investment in human and capital cannot flourish under political volatile environments. Facilitating and deepening security intelligence now, before and after, must become our collective and shared experiences to safeguard investment for the sustainable and the future of after as well as development of the continent and our dear mother Ghana. Chancellor of the University of Ghana, Mary Chinri Hesse, believed that competitive global trade with Africa can be realized if there are attractive yet identifiable brands. We will also expect recommendations as to how business com communities may prioritize develop and implement smarter strategies to seize the rising opportunities in manufacturing and industrialization across a variety of sectors. Another measure proposed by the Vice Chancellor of the University of Ghana, Professor Nanaba Ampia Amfo, was the need to boost income of citizens. Delivering the keynote address, Vice President Dr. Baumia highlighted plans the government has put in place to maximize the benefits of AFTA for the country. In order to facilitate trade, the ongoing expansion of the Tema port, which upon completion will make it one of the biggest ports in Africa, the Takradi port expansion, as well as the development of numerous road projects and railway networks are all testaments of government's resolve to leverage new market opportunities for the continent. For Joy News, Hannah Odame and Elisha Pamfors report. In addition to what you heard, the Vice President also announced that all senior high schools in Ghana will be provided with tablets to aid the academic work. We've implemented free Wi-Fi in our senior high schools. Uh, and one of the things that I'm very excited for this year, the Minister of Education has uh, told me that we are on course this year to provide all high school students in Ghana with tablets which are loaded with textbooks on them for their studies. That is very, very a game-changing development, if you call it. Uh, and so we will have past questions and all of that preloaded on these tablets uh, that, that will be distributed to all. And I pray that it does come to pass this year. Uh, but they are fully uh, on course to do that. Outside of the capital, now residents of 11 deprived communities in the Garu district of the Upper East region are unhappy about the delay by government to connect their areas to the national electricity grid. According to them, three years ago, the district assembly began work to bring electricity to their areas. But after the electricity poles and transformers were transported to the communities, the work suddenly stalled. Correspondent Albert Sorry reports. The 11 communities are across six electoral areas in the Garo district. The communities include Kolsuga, Pialugu, Kukupiela, 
Yiziduk, Bantafargu, Dusbuliga, among others. Development is gradually expanding in these communities, but they are currently without electricity, making life difficult for the residents. According to the people who live in these communities, they have to go long distances to other communities just to be able to charge their phones. Economic activities which require the use of electricity are also affected. It has affected us a lot, a lot. We have been suffering. We have been suffering. Uh, you see that if you turn, you see there is a store here. If you go forward there, there is another one there. There are others around where we need to be selling certain things, where we need electricity to operate. We don't have electricity. We have to buy fuel to use generators. Now fuel prices went up. So all those stores have been closed down. For electricity, a lot of problems. Our mothers need electricity to do a lot of works, uh, economic work that will give them uh, profits. But because of the lack of the electricity, they are also sitting down there. They don't have anything to do. Where you can stock your water or your drinks, and take it to the market and then sell and get something. Here in the Kosovo community, this thing is not happening. The light, there's no light here. Because there's no light, people, children travel from here to town to go and watch uh, news, to also know what is happening in the country. But I think if there's light in the community here, there will be televisions whereby people, children and people will get educated about what is happening in Ghana. Students in these communities are compelled to use torchlights or candles to be able to revise their notes at night. Because we are students and anytime we go to school and we come in the night to revise, there is no real light for us to revise. We have to always travel from a far, a far away place before we can get electricity to revise our notes. We have been praying and also uh, talking to the authorities to help us to see whether we can get the electricity. Three years ago, the Garo District Assembly had begun work to connect these 11 communities to the national electricity grid. The people were excited when they saw that electricity poles and transformers had arrived for the work to be done. But their excitement was short-lived as the work was not continued since then. District Chief Executive for Garu, Osman Musa, says plans are far advanced to connect the 11 communities to the national electricity grid in the first quarter of this year as part of government's rural electrification project. Uh, in totality, we have up to 11 communities that uh, have had progress of work uh, at different levels. Uh, Kolsuga, in particularly where we are standing, the whole community has been wired. The lights has been stepped into the houses. Each house has been equipped with a meter. The high tension uh, provision has been made. The low tension provision has been made. Uh, transformers has been installed, but then uh, from the preliminary uh, checks, uh, some poles will need to be replaced as uh, they have been weakened because of uh, they have stayed for long and uh, they will need to be replaced. This among the 11 communities we are uh, determined as an assembly to power them in this first quarter of the year. But about 49 other communities have been awarded uh, materials under the SHEP project. And so we are also working closely with the Ministry of Energy to get all the materials delivered. For the people of the Garo district, it is their hope that the DC East West do not only remain mere promises, but will come to fruition as soon as possible. For Joy News, Albert Sorry, reporting from Garo. Now, residents of Amakom in Kumasi are concerned about the spike in robbery cases in recent days. Criminals have turned the neglected Kumasi Children's Park into a haven, subjecting unsuspecting public to armed attacks. 
The Kumase Children's Park at Amikum has been non-functional for over two decades. The enclave is overgrown and serves as a hideout for criminals who rob passers-by of their belongings. Residents and others commuting around the park often fall prey to these criminals. So after several years of neglect and inactivity, this is the state of the Amekum Children's Park. The dilapidated Children's Park has now turned into a haven for criminals. Residents want the park to be free of hooligans. Nothing works over here, so we are suffering as a community. There is nothing positive. There are always murder cases. The main road is where they stand to stop people. They stabbed one man I know. He was coming from Afokwanta. And when he got down, they quickly rushed him. The criminal cases are enormous. You can't pass here at 7.30 p.m. Boys too. I witnessed several robbery cases as well. It's devastating considering the schools around. Because a crumb for some near would this somewhere cost on a dorsal. Even so, be for a crack, cry, air barn, which I'm more saying, yes, be a bear watch night, ever ha. Depend see ya, only chance a cajun, one year, ma. Boy be corporate. I'm watching bear say four, four thirty. Seps yes, we are, only to channel one a second corner. And until I had it's very worrying. You can't pass here at night. They stabbed a student of Kumasa Polytechnic not long ago. We would plead with the police to intervene. Nana Boachi Dan Kwayadom reporting for Joy News. Now, access to clean drinking water in Ghana has generally improved, but many communities are still in need of clean water sources. Now, following this development, 15 year old Stephen Boache has developed a prototype system to help households purify their water using basic materials. He's one of the ambassadors for the Ghana Science and Tech Explorer Prize Initiative, which aims to equip junior high school students with practical STEM skills to solve societal problems. Joy Prime's Lois Ademi has more on the following reports. Bensiri, a village in the district of the Ashanti region, is one of many without portable water in Ghanaian villages. Residents here rely on a dirty and brownish water source for domestic use. Sadly, they also share the same water source with cattle and drink without any form of treatment. This has led to an increase in waterborne diseases in the community. The problem that I identified in my community is diseases outbreak as a result of intake of unclean water. They drink with animals like cows. 
about 15-year-old Stephen Boache, who hails from this village, is determined to make a difference. He has developed a water purification system that uses basic materials and six processes to remove dirt and pollutants from the water. This is a water purifier. So I'll connect my device. I'm going to add dirty water. I wait for some time so that the process can take place. One is having the filter paper and the foams the, and uh, a net which traps the suspended particles. And from that, the other container also have an uh, aqua tap and a charcoal, which decreases the rate of maybe when the water is having maybe a high acidity. The, uh, the last container will have the filtrate, and if you want it to be cooled, you just switch on this so that you wait for some time and after that you just take it. Stephen is one of the ambassadors for the Ghana Science and Tech Explorer Prize, GISTE, an initiative put together by the Dream Oval Foundation to equip junior high school students with practical STEM skills to solve societal problems. So this prototype is going to help them. When, when uh, it has been in the last scale, it's going to help them uh, purify a lot of water for the whole community. According to UNICEF Ghana, about 11% of the population still drinks from surface water and other unsafe sources. But Stephen is hopeful that his prototype, if given the needed support, will reduce waterborne diseases in his community. Ben Seri, Lois Adenyemi's report for Joy Prime. Meanwhile, the G-Step exhibition and award ceremony is slated for January 25, 2023, and the venue is the Accra International Conference Center. Now, more than a year ago, the multimedia group launched the Classroom Project as a solution to two of the hundreds of weak school structures dotted across the country. The first project situated at Breman Jamira in the Esikuma Odobin Brakwa district of the central region is currently at the roofing stage and requires small funds for completion. Construction is however yet to start on the second project in Tolon in the northern region. Richard Kujonyako visited the Breman Jamira DA Business School site on Tuesday and sent in the following reports. So we are currently at Breman Jamra DA Basic School and this is where six years ago the unfortunate occurrence where six kindergarten school pupils uh, were killed. I mean the building, the called classroom collapsed on them and their lives were snapped out. Six years on, that building has been completed. But there is another building here that is a death trap. The children have their hearts in their mouth whenever they enter this building. So look at the footings of this building. All of these things are removing gradually. They are being removed and the building shakes visibly. Get here. This place shakes as soon as you hit it slightly then it shakes it threatens to break away from the entire structure so the case do play and unfortunately if any of them should lean on this wall then the unfortunate thing would happen now when it rains rain seeps through the roofing heavily and so Classes have to be disrupted. Academic activities have to come to a halt. The school pupils have been telling us that they feel unsafe. They are afraid for their lives whenever it rains because when it rains, the building, the entire building shakes very well and they feel threatened and they have the unfortunate occurrence six years ago on the back of their mind that something could happen. So what have you been learning today? It is dangerous for us to learn in. When the rain enter the classroom, the classroom will be very dirty here. So we don't want this class again. We want a new one. So we don't want this class. We want the other one there. 
we please them to help us this new building so that we can live comfortably in that new room. Because when it is raining, our ceiling will be removing. The water will be coming inside this room, so we don't want this class again. We want a new one. We feel, we feel shaking. When the, when the rain is falling, we feel shaking, we fear, so that the, we fear that the, uh, the building will be broken. So we want the, the, the government to build an, another school for us. We are telling them to come and help us to build the room because we are begging them to come and help us to build the building. Fortunately, the multimedia group decided to embark on a project and then build a classroom structure that could accommodate the kids. In fact, the kids are crammed in some of the classrooms and it makes academic work very, very difficult. So this is the entire structure that Multimedia has been working on and it has gotten to the roof level and we need your support. We need the support of the entire country. We cannot wait for any calamity to befall kids yet again in the name of accessing education. And that is why this project ought to be completed so that the kids can move in from the dilapidated structure they currently call the classroom into this new one. Get 60,000 Ghana cities, the entire building would be completed and ready to be handed over to the school. At the moment we are at the roofing stage and all we need is the, the roof members to come and then the sheet will be on it Then we'll do the ceiling joint, get the doors and the windows fixed. Then we come to a final stage where the tiling will, will come and then also the jointing and pointing for this finishing will come. Then we are done. So at the moment, if I have to estimate, I would say we are like 70% done. We just left about 30%. But the energy is not coming. And we need help to be able to rescue these innocent kids. Because some of us dedicated our time and energy and our, our knowledge, wisdom, and then this technology to come in and support. It costs me a lot, but it doesn't amount to human life. I mean, if I go to bed, always getting scared that, what if something happens to these kids? They will go like, ah, they started, but they couldn't complete it. I'll, I'll, I'll be, I'll, what is keeping you on? Yes, that is, that is what is giving me the energy to still try to push so that we can get this done and then hand it over to the, to the community. Because these kids, look, the last time I was here, when we were on site, when it started raining, before I could say Jack, the, the kids, all of them came into the corridor just because they were scared that the roof of the structure could be lifted off. How, how much are we talking about here? Like I said, um, if I should do rough estimate, we need a little under 60,000. Because we're talking about the, the woodworks for the, the roof itself. We need a sheet, we need the, the, the windows and the doors faced. You understand? Uh -huh. And then workmanship, and then we need a ceiling or everything. That, that amount should be able to sort us out. So I am appealing to you to help us, the multimedia group, to help with this project. Help us contribute your quota so that we will not be visited with any disaster. We will not come here to be reporting disasters, but we will be coming here to be reporting about the successes chalked by these students because they need to also study in environments like their peers, like their counterparts in other parts of the country. Reporting for Joy News, Richard Kwejonyakon, Bremen Jamra. Here's where we draw the curtains on this morning's edition of the news. For more, log on to www.majoryonline.com. My name is Pakwe Sishandov. Stay.